Out of nowhere, Toyota just came out with a statement that they're going to be moving their plans to electrify their fleet up by five years. Now, this is a pretty serious statement. As you know, originally, they wanted to have half of their sales to be electrified by 2030, but now they're moving it up to 2025. Is this good news or is this just more hot air from a legacy manufacturer. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but most importantly, because today is Friday, I'm going to bring in Tom Monogny from Inside EVs, and he's going to tell me his uh, uh, view on this, and uh, we'll see if we agree on this one, and if 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 really this, uh, this legacy manufacturer that's been lagging probably behind everybody is really serious about it this time. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, as I mentioned, uh, Tom is going to be here in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about quite a few things, right? First of all, just a bit of a history with Toyota because they were pretty much one of the first manufacturers out there to put out an all-electric uh, vehicle. A lot of people forgot about the original RAV4. Uh, but after that, they've kind of started gambling on what I consider wrong technology with a, uh, a hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, but at the same time, the uh, Toyota Prius uh, plug-in hybrid has been really kicking butt in, uh, in EV sales, especially lately. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're consistent, uh, consistently being behind the hydrogen fuel cell uh, technology and kind of a refusal to move on to our side here of all electric battery powered cars has been definitely, um, you know, disappointing. Uh, but this announcement kind of took everybody by surprise. So we're going to discuss this uh, in just a second. Uh, before that, of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byte and check out all electric and Byte, the all electric SUV coming to the US and Europe uh, at the end of next year, starting at only $45,000. That's before the incentives and starting at $0 to make a reservation for it. And about really just 60 seconds of your time, go to the description of this video to get yours today and join myself and 50,000 of other people who've done that already. All right. So without further ado, let me bring in Tom and get his opinion on this. Tom, how are you, my friend? Good afternoon, Alex. Good to be back. Well, you you you've you've seen the announcement. You've seen the pictures. Uh, you know, uh, what are your thoughts? What do you? Oh, by the way, before we even go any further, now that I look at you, uh, there's something interesting behind you. Uh, it looks like uh, some sort of a Tesla of some sort. <laughs> Tell us a yeah, little bit about some, that. Something's over here plugged in, charging. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but a new uh, EV has found its way into my garage. Um, the proud owner of a 2019 Model 3 uh, long-range all-wheel drive. Just got it uh, delivered uh, yesterday. They actually did a home delivery for me, which was very nice. And uh, got about 100 miles on it now. So far, so good. Uh, you know, we're not really going to dive into that car too much this week. Maybe we'll talk about it next, next week. Next week. Let's do it next week. Had a good week to talk, to check it out. But there is one thing I will say. Uh, you know, and the, uh, there's been a lot of talk back and forth about uh, build quality of Model 3s. And some of the early Model 3s that I've seen did have their share of problems. But I can say uh, I thoroughly inspected this vehicle and it looks perfect. Excellent. Uh, and they I, have I, I, Tesla's major, major improvement with build quality. All right, let's save this for next week. Next week, we'll dive right in once you, you know, put more miles on it uh, and, and kind of give us, a, a, you know, your your opinion, which I'm sure is going to be very unique. But let's get back to the Toyota. What are your what are your thoughts on this? You know, um, I'm well, you go first. OK, yeah. so I'm, I'm glad to see Toyota, even if it's a little bit starting to warm up to EVs. And it wasn't just the announcement recently that actually just came across the news within the last 24 hours, as far as they're planning on moving that prediction up five years. They had originally said by 2030, they expect 50% of their global sales to be electrified. That could be plug-in hybrids also. Uh, but now they say that they're going to actually meet that by 2025. Um, the other announcement that I think is just as important and exciting is that they're actually partnering now with Subaru to develop this next generation platform for a, a crossover or SUV vehicle. 
that you have up there on the screen that uh, both manufacturers will use that uh, platform and make their own vehicle. So that, that that's something that is kind of a concession that, hey, maybe we waited too long and now we really have to try to catch up quickly. So we're going to collaborate with Subaru and put our resources together and get something done as quickly as possible. Uh, so that's, that's something that I think is uh, probably just as important news as hearing that they're going to move, they plan on hitting their 50% uh, five years earlier. Well, let me ask you about that. So their, their partnership with Subaru, but I mean, out of everybody to partner up, you know, why Subaru? I mean, if I can think of another uh, car company that's just as behind as Toyota on electrifying their fleet, that would be Subaru. So why? Well, there's your answer. <laughs> there, there's your answer. Both companies need to get going as quickly as possible. So they figured, let's do this together. Uh, they don't, uh, Toyota doesn't, Nissan doesn't need to partner with Toyota. Uh, you know, Honda might have been a possibility, but they seem to, have done, you know, even though they don't have any production cars really for sale yet, they did have the Fit EV. They learned a lot from, from that vehicle. Um, they have already plans of introducing electric vehicles. So, you know, Subaru, you know, might have been the perfect partner uh, because, you know, they, they, they need to do some catching up too. I think, you know, both Toyota and Subaru uh, maybe thought that uh, originally it was going to take a little bit longer to, to really transition to electrics and now find themselves needing to catch up. You know, Toyota, they're the largest manufacturer in the world. So there's really no excuse, no legitimate excuse as far as I'm concerned for them not being further along with electric vehicle program. Subaru is a different story. They're a very small auto manufacturer. They don't have the resources to pour, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars into uh, electrification. So I can understand why Subaru hasn't really been on the forefront uh, of electrification, but Toyota, it's just uh, the, the, their corporate culture, their decision that we were going to transition from hybrid vehicles to fuel cell vehicles and that this whole battery electric vehicle uh, thing that's going on now was just some sort of a transitional period. I think they're starting to realize that they may have made a mistake there. Uh, I've, interviewed Toyota managers. I've talked to pretty much in the last 10 years, representatives from every company out there, Alex. And honestly, the Toyota people have been the most negative on electric vehicles of any of the companies that I've ever spoken with. And, you know, they just have it, had it in their head that, you know, EVs aren't going to work. They're not a long-term solution. They're just like a transitional solution until we we went to fuel cells, so they weren't going to invest a lot into it. Now, it's possible that they actually believed that, but it's also possible that they knew that was a lie and that it was just a corporate line so they can continue selling hybrids. You know, Toyota and Lexus account for about 80% of the hybrids sold worldwide. They dominate hybrid car sales, and it's very profitable for them. So I can understand why they would want to, you know, spread FUD about uh, electrification, electric cars, because, hey, you know, you don't need those electric cars. They, they take too long to charge. They don't go very far. Uh, we've got this great solution for you here. It's these hybrid cars, and they get great gas mileage, and you don't have to waste your time standing around waiting for the thing to charge. So, you know, it's difficult to really understand if they really believed that EVs didn't work or if they just were saying that because they wanted to sell more hybrids. Well, yeah, no, and, you know, and I guess my, my, you kind of answering my next question is I was going to, um, I was going to tell you like, well, you know, we're, I'm showing you the renderings. Uh, I, I'm showing that my viewers, the renderings of all of this uh, press images that they just released. And to me, you know, if you're going to announce anything as far as, you know, bringing up new cars, at least have decency to put one together <laughs> and have one in person rather, because this is something that I expect, uh, you know, art institutes, uh, a, a graphics design student to put together overnight. Uh, for their project, so uh, you know, I mean, you look at some of these pictures. You, uh, you, you can't. You, it's anyway. Listen, now, let me 
let me mention one more thing that they have announced, which actually I would say a, the most positive thing, right? So like, let me give my opinion really quick on this one. Uh, first of all, to me, this announcement means absolutely nothing. And this pictures have means absolutely nothing. They've uh, still kind of said that they're still going to, you know, go with elect electrified fleet, which can still mean hybrids, right? Um, and secondly, they partner up with another company who, who has absolutely no idea how to do this car. So that's literally, once again, they're looking uh, in the wrong direction. But to give them credit, there are, there's, there are two partnerships that they have announced that actually to me can 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 give a little bit of a glimpse of of, of positive um they've partnered up with two uh battery providers CATL and Biotti so they're both chinese battery providers both huge giants in uh in the industry and this means that well, maybe they really are finally realizing that they need to produce more of the battery powered electric cars and they don't have enough power, uh, you know, and, and enough uh, production uh, to supply their to, to supply their own plants. So just like many other manufacturers, they're now creating this contract. So that I would say that's positive. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? No, I agree. They wouldn't have signed these agreements if they didn't realize that they're going to need a ton of batteries and you don't really need a ton of batteries for just basic hybrid electric vehicles, cars that don't plug in. Toyota's been making their own batteries for a while now for these hybrids. They actually even made it clear uh, in that press conference or the meeting that they had, uh, yes, I think it was yesterday, that said they still consider themselves a battery manufacturer and they do make the batteries for their hybrids. But the fact that they had to go out and sign these two contracts lets you know that they plan on needing a lot of batteries. And, you know, you don't need a lot of batteries unless you're making battery electric vehicles. So, you know, I, I think that that's part of the plan. I think that that is telling. I also agree that those renderings are kind of, uh, you know, just uh, window dressing <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, you talked about a, a design. Uh, student you know that's like high school stuff actually <laughs> i wouldn't even go to somebody that's in design school yeah so yeah they that was whipped together really quickly to put something out there but uh i i you know i, I of course i'm still cautioned because cautious, i'm being very cautious because toyota has just been so negative but i think this is newsworthy because they are talking about partnerships for electric platforms, signing contracts to buy batteries, you know, moving up their electrified fleet uh, by five years. So I, I think the ball is moving. Uh, I, I certainly don't think that they're all of a sudden a pro EV company now. You know, they're still, you know, talking about how their uh, uh, they're, they're self-charging hybrids are so great. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, well, tell I'm me, uh, tell taking this with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah. And so you actually called them out on that on Twitter. Uh, I thought I was the only guy trying to call people out on Twitter and cause trouble. But uh, apparently you did something interesting the other day. Uh, tell us, t well, it was a couple of weeks ago with, uh, I believe, Toyota of uh, UK. Tell us a little bit about, about that. Yeah, I just happened to see in my Twitter feed there was an ad for a Toyota of UK where they were talking about how great their new Corolla self-charging hybrid is, you know? So uh, I made a little snarky response to them and kind of said, you know, who are you fooling? Oh, there you got it up there so that everybody can read it. And, uh, you know, basically I said that you're, uh, you know, you've been lying to us for a while and you, you're anti zero emissions and uh, I won't buy another Toyota again. So and they responded to me. They, 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 they made a nice response that basically said, you know, we, we appreciate your comment. And, uh, you know, we've already outlined our electrification plans and yada, yada, yada. So uh, but I at least I got their attention. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of. Uh, so I, I'm with you on the same page. Like I will, whenever Toyota comes up with an electric car, I'm not buying it, right? I'm like never Toyota guy for now, at least. I feel like uh, it's the same type of a deal where people never want to buy a Volkswagen Group car, right? Because of the diesel gate. And, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, yeah, well, it's kind of like that. To me, 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm more forgiving uh, of Volkswagen Group for Dieselgate that because because they're doing something about it, right? Um, and don't get me wrong, I don't want to downplay that. It was a horrible thing. I'm glad all those people are in jail. I'm glad they've paid so much more money. But they are actually use that to propel themselves into electric future. And as a matter of fact, just the other day, I think it was a couple of days ago, they ran a big ad during the NBA finals. And now there's print and online ads. They're head on uh, addressing Dieselgate. And I featured a video about it uh, a couple of days ago. I absolutely loved it. Uh, with the uh, uh, Sound of Silence soundtrack, just just head on addressing it. So I'm more willing to forgive them because they're changing than I'm willing to forgive Toyota for never doing anything about it. As a matter of fact, working consistently against it. Um, so I'm think I'm, I'm on the same bandwagon of I don't care what you guys do. I don't think I'm going to support you unless you do something absolutely amazing. Uh, and acknowledge the fact and definitely fire everybody who was in charge throughout this period when you weren't doing this. Are we on the same page there? Well, kind of. You know, I don't, you know, Volkswagen was kind of forced to do what they're doing now. So before we give them a whole lot of credit, you know, they did something really terrible, and lied to the public, deceived the public, uh, you know, so, and they were caught. So they kind of, have to do what they're doing now. So, you know, before you give them a whole lot of credit, yeah, I like what I've been seeing from Volkswagen. I had the opportunity to visit the, their, their uh, offices in Germany recently and talk to a lot of their program managers, get a tour of one of their factories, and they do seem committed to transition to all electrics, more so than the other German brands. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about them also. You know, Toyota, on the other hand, is, is still way behind. They're still, you know, denying that uh, BEVs are going to really take over. Even with this new announcement, they're still, you know, on one hand saying that, and on the other hand saying, well, we haven't changed our strategy, our long-term strategy yet. So um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what uh, their, their long-term strategy is. It's still a little bit convoluted, but it's good to see that they are beginning to at least admit, hey, uh, the path that we said we were going to take, well, that might not be working and we need to take another path. I'd really be interested to see if they stop these negative ads uh, all over the world about how, you know, uh, hybrids are just so much better than battery electric vehicles. Uh, this, you know, the ad about the Corolla hybrid wasn't the first one. Back in 2014, they were running tons of ads about how bad plug-in electric vehicles were. At one, one of their ads even compared their one of their Lexus hybrids to a BMW i3 that I had and talked about how terrible it would be on a road trip. And we actually then um, caught some of the video and, and took still shots of it. And they did Photoshop over. They actually used the BMW with the range extender to film their video, but they Photoshopped over the fuel door. So realistically, they were comparing a plug-in hybrid to their hybrid, and they were saying that it couldn't drive more than you know 80 miles without stopping for four hours when that really wasn't true. So we even caught them out on that a while ago. But they've run some really negative ads about electric vehicles. If that continues, then it's the same old, same old. Well, let me uh, let me play the beginning, maybe the first 10 seconds of this ad that I think one of the ones that you're referring to, and maybe you can comment a little further. So um, let me run it. Um right now some advancements in old fuel technology actually hold you back lexus hybrid drive however has been moving forward for nearly 10 years straight we started so there you go uh that's you know that's basically them calling out uh, the electric car movement on you know having some issues um you don't like that tell, tell us why yeah it's just spreading FUD. You know, I mean, it's, you know, fear mongering and, you know, you don't want to buy one of these electric cars. Technology is great, but, you know, some technology holds us back is basically what they're saying in that, you know, with an electric car, you're, you're sitting around and waiting. Uh, the video showed, you know, four hours before you can go anywhere. Now that's, that, that, that's true to a point. Electric cars take longer to recharge. But with infrastructure improving these days and ranges getting so much longer, 
you know, you could find a DC fast charger in, 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 in many areas. The cars have bigger batteries. They go longer. Uh, it's, 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 it's really not genuine in my opinion to show ads like that. That's just fear mongering. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to say this and then, believe me, in no way I'm defending Toyota here. I, 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 as you know, when I, ha I owned the Tesla for seven years and the reason I bought a Volt to commute is because I absolutely refuse to sit uh, 45 minutes, not four hours, 45 minutes or so is the average on a, on a Tesla supercharger uh, versus watching everybody else, all the gas cars, you know, come and go in two or three minutes of refueling. Uh, I believe this is the biggest problem right now as far as selling this whole electric car uh, a, a thing packaged to you know regular Joe and um, now but on the other hand that's not what that commercial was about right they, you're right they're just trying to keep their hybrid sales up um, again there's some truth to it but one of the reasons we're not where we're where we, we want to be is because legacy manufacturers like Toyota are not helping and as a matter of fact working against us so there is a truth to you know slow charging. Uh, issue especially with a long long uh actually not especially the only time it's a problem is when you travel a long long distance um otherwise you charge overnight uh in your garage uh but but the but the purpose of that ad is obviously uh, is, is wrong so um okay so l let me ask you this like well, we've talked about all of this you know there's some goods there's some bad there's some photoshopping um do you think they're serious about it and when do you think we can actually see some serious all electric cars from Toyota, or do you think this is just a little PR stunt? We're going to forget about it tomorrow. Well, I definitely think there's some PR involved in this. You know, they, they just want to uh, get their name out there that, Hey, you know, everybody else is doing this electric thing and don't forget us. You know, we pioneered the, the, the hybrids, you know, we're all in for electrification also. Uh, but whether or not it means anything, you know, I think the <laughs> it doesn't mean anything if that's what they're going to release, just these tiny little city cars that go like 30 miles. Yeah. But I think the first electric car they committed to is going to be in 2020, I think, late 2020. So that's only next year. And um, let's see what they're what 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 they bring out. It's really hard to tell. You know, the the, the electric cars that they've made so far, the first and second generation RAV4 EVs. Uh, they were good vehicles. People really liked them. They still, some of the people are still driving the first generations that were made in like 2002 to I think 2006. Uh, you know, the second generation had a Tesla powertrain. Uh, there's quite a bit of them out there that people love. They were just made for compliance. They had to make 2,600 and they made like exactly 2,600 and then stopped making them, which we knew Toyota would do. Uh, but let's see, let's see if they're changing their tune. To be honest with you, no one's too big to fail. If Toyota doesn't get on the ball, if they don't start producing good, long-range, high-quality BEVs, they'll be a footnote in automotive history, too. They're the largest automaker today, but they're not too large to fail. If they don't get on this electric vehicle you know, revolution, they'll be toast, too. I agree. Yeah, I do think they're already way too many steps behind. I think by the time they come on the market, unless they do something amazing, unless they figure out like solid state uh, uh, battery technology and be first to the market or being, you know, at least close to it. Um, they're very, very much behind. So, but um, all right, well, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on this. People are very much interested in this brand and a lot of Toyota fans have been waiting for the electrification. Um, let's hope it comes. Uh, and uh, I'll, 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 we'll, I'm sure this conversation will be continued in another, in the next half a year for sure. Uh, but next week, we're going to talk about uh, the uh, Model 3 and see what your experience uh, is about it, you know, with it so far. Can't wait. I'm looking forward to that discussion also. All right, Tom. Well, thanks for yet another uh, uh, awesome conversation, and I will see you next week. Have a good week, Alex. You too. See you then. All right, guys, as you know, you can find Tom on InsideEVs.com. There's always a link in the description of this video. And if you want to follow his uh, outrageous behavior on Twitter, calling out all kinds of manufacturers there, uh, Tom Malog is uh, where you can find him on Twitter. So, um, you know, you know, I, I don't you guys know me. I support anything that is um, 
moving all of us forward in electrification uh, of all transportation. So um, I don't want to be too pessimistic. It's just like I feel like I've been lied to too many times by this brand. And what they're putting out right now is, is more of a fluff than a reality. Um, the only thing I will give them credit for is the, the manufacturer contracts for with Biotti and um, uh, CATL, the uh, battery providers. That does actually make me think they might just be a little bit serious. And hey, listen. Prove me wrong. At this point, I don't want to see Photoshop pictures. Uh, we've seen plenty of them. Everybody else doing real cars. I, I, that's what I want to see uh, from them as well. You know what else I want to see? You guys on my newsletter list, uh, a VIP list as we're calling it. It's free. Uh, we have a bonus story every Saturday. So tomorrow you guys will uh, uh, get a new bonus story that we're working on right now. And of course, the deal of the month that we continue doing from um, Evanex. But um, let me know what you think about this. Are you on the side of Toyota? Do you think they're actually going to get their stuff together and, and, and finally produce electric cars? Or do you think it's just yet another PR star? Or maybe you're, you're somewhere in between. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged.